Hello, all you wonderful people, and thank you for joining us for the Customer Success Skills Exchange. We have the pleasure of having Grant Young with us today. We're going to talk about the GitLab load testing tool and um, you know, how to prep it and how to run it, all of those good things. I'll put the agenda in the chat and give the stage to Grant. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, so um, that's that's pretty much what we're going to do today. Um, I've prepared some slides for us to kind of go through uh, briefly. I try and keep it high level and not go into the details because we do have documentation as well. But um, they'll, we'll try and keep a lot of time for questions at the end for if people want to really deep dive or not. But um, yeah, let's get into it. Um, so yeah, what we're going to cover today is what kind of was said there is uh, what is the the GPT, we call it the GitLab Performance Tool, um, and how do you set up and run it essentially. Uh, and as the next slide kind of will say after this one, is that what we'll say first is that the tool is uh, something that we've designed over the last year uh, to run performance tests against GitLab. So, so I'll try to make it as clear as possible. Um, the idea is that it is primarily designed to uh, run against a GitLab uh, environment, but it's designed to test GitLab the application in a lab-like setting. Um, I don't go into it here, but what that means is that you know we try and set up GitLab in a clean environment um, where there's not other people using the environment or anything else there that could disrupt the results. And then we can run the test test against it, and then if we get any bad results back, we know or we can be confident that the it's the actual code, it's the actual application that needs to be fixed. And this is opposed to with .com, where you get a lot of data and about performance stuff, that's called field data, which is also very important. But GPT is the, the lab side. But by proxy as well, it can also be used to test uh, test the environment as, uh, as it is, actually test that the environment itself is good enough to actually handle the throughput we expect. And that's working correctly. Uh, so it is a little bit functional in that regards as well. A kind of a build tool, you could say. But before we get into the, the tool uh, completely, um, the vast majority of the effort of performance testing isn't actually running the tests, uh, it's actually preparing the tests uh, set up. And as this uh, very detailed graphic will show you, uh, half the, over half the battle, I'd say, is actually preparing the environment and preparing the test data. And then there's the actual bit of actually designing and running the tests themselves. So first we're going to the environment setup. Uh, when we started to want to increase our, the quality group wanting to increase our performance testing, it was pretty obvious quite quickly that we needed to test against bespoke environments. Um, that works quite well in tandem with reference architectures, which some of you might have heard of, which uh, we helped design and build. While we're also building the performance test, it was a very symbiotic situation where um, we were testing GitLab with the tool, make sure the tool is working and then actually tweaking the environment setup to uh, to be the right size with the right specs to actually hand, handle the throughput that we expect. And now that came the reference architectures. So it's a very dependent situation here. We need a good environment that can handle throughput and we need to actually have the, the tool to actually run against them. So we built both in tandem, essentially. So that really is a large part of the battle here. If you're running, again, you can't just run against any environment. The environment must be well enough spec as per our recommendations else the tool is just, just going to report uh, significant performance issues. The other bit of the battle, so to speak, is test data. Um, once you've got the environment set up, obviously you'll have nothing in it. And uh, test there is very difficult uh, to, to get right uh, because you can do it in so many different ways. And from experience, really, you want test data that can be as realistic as possible. And the most realistic thing you can get is actually real projects. So we've uh, we initially started testing with the, the actual GitLab project itself. Um, it's a sanitized version that we, we keep as a backup. And through that, then we're actually we're testing against, you know, realistic. We're hitting various endpoints that are returning real, real data, such as merge requests, issues, that kind of thing. We've also then built on top of that and started to expand it a bit more. Uh, to, to try and cover different aspects of GitLab that we want to test. One of these are projects and groups, which are like a level above projects. Uh, so we've we built a, a script recently uh, that 
helps to automate all this process. That's the goal, where you just run it against your environment once, and it should import all the projects it needs. It should also set up all the groups and projects it needs all under one big group, and then GPT will be able to run against that, uh, and and it should be it should be grand. Uh, the idea is that it's always the same data on every environment that I test against. So then we can compare like for like. We know the test data. We know the tests. It's a completely controlled environment, essentially. Um, and then the actual tests and the actual running the test comes into play. Um, we've, uh, over the last year, we've tried to build tests to cover the various endpoints of GitLab. Um, these include like API, web, uh, Git, uh, to call it the web test, though, we're not actually testing browser performance with this tool. We should call that out specifically. We're testing server performance because even the web page still needs to hit the server in various ways to pull in the data. We have a separate pipeline, a separate tool, SiteSpeed, to test browser performance. Um, our coverage isn't 100%, uh, not even close. Um, it's very difficult uh, to, to build up stuff. It's very difficult to test certain aspects of GitLab in terms of performance, but we're, con we're, con we're continuing to add to it expand it as, as much as we can. We fight the tool in both Docker and native. Uh, you can run it natively on Linux, or you can run it in a Docker if you so wish. Um, there's a whole bunch of, pr of parameters that you could use to, to run with it, although these are mostly optional and only really would need to be used if you're wanting to do something specific. Um, we also provide various scenario options, as we call them, to run the tests. Um, we're always looking to improve this, but at the moment you'd be able to say, you'd be able to pick a file that says, I want you to run every test at 60 seconds and at 200 RPS request per second, for example, which uh, would be the, the throughput of a, an environment that should handle when about 10,000 users. Um, the other thing to call it is that you'll see that the, the tool will test different endpoints differently. Uh, API, we hit the full uh, throughput because the API endpoints we've seen in the real world get hit the hardest, whereas web and Git are actually quite comparatively quite a lot lower than API, but they still get to hit quite hard as well. Once the tests are then finished, uh, you'll get a result summary. Um, and in this page, we, we also try and call out that we, we, we follow various thresholds that we, we evaluate the test with. Um, there's two main ones really, it's the RPS rate, request per second, the test was actually able to achieve against the server. And then it is the, the, the time to first byte response, the how long it took for the server to respond. And um, we measure the 90th percentile of that. So typically, it's not clear here, but typically we, we aim for each test to be under 500 milliseconds uh, for, for that metric. But um, if you find endpoints that are slower or, or not performing up to standard, we adjust the thresholds in the test. So you'll see the thresholds will be different, but that's fine. We do that intentionally. So we then we, raise issues against those endpoints, get them fixed, hopefully, and then we would adjust them back down. We just keep them, we adjust them so we can always be monitoring them because they could actually get worse. And then, yeah, over the last year we've made uh, good progress. We've raised, uh, actually they've raised about 47 issues so far uh, against GitLab, uh, 25 have been closed, 22 are still open. Um, either endpoints have been fixed completely or right. Um, We've seen really good instances where, for example, the, the CPU usage or for some endpoints uh, was dramatically bad and that's been uh, fixed substantially so the CPU doesn't spike as much. Uh, we've seen various endpoints drop seconds off their endpoints and it's a credit to the teams for the work they've been they've done so far and the uh, and the effort they, they put into because they know that performance issues is something that we all need to tackle. Um, some of the issues are We've, we've set up a system where we don't, you know, because performance is difficult. Uh, you know, if an endpoint's coming in at, say, 10 seconds, it's probably going to be not very likely they can get down to 500 milliseconds in one go. So this tech, we actually have a system where we have different thresholds. We say we would like it to get down to this, and then we raise a new issue for the next threshold. And that um, helps us just chip away and just keep constantly improving the performance of GitLab. And then at the end, yeah, there's some useful links and some questions. I appreciate that was a, a whirlwind. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it high level without getting into the details, but I'm more than happy to answer questions. Um, and I will call it again. The documentation goes into all of these details on our projects uh, to for you to kind of go at your own speed and just kind of go through and, and see what we've done. <laughs>